Hey guys! Welcome back to Let's Play Xenosaga Episode 2! Last time, Jin kept throwing salt over his shoulder, or whatever the hell that action is supposed to be. If we wait here long enough, eventually he'll run out of salt, and he won't do anything. Not really, I just have no idea why he continues to do that at such a frequent pace. Anyway, last time we did a little bit of dicking around, we got a few new items, unlocked a couple of doors, got some new secret keys, most of which we won't be putting to use at this point. But, for now, let's move forward with the plot and go straight for Milsha. Or at least that's the plan. Momo, how's the enemy fleet trace? They're headed for point E-52 at combat speed. Damn, they got some guts to be charging in there that fast. That Isn't that what you did all of last game? Of course, at this rate, we're never gonna catch them. Captain, I must warn you. What is it? Make it quick. If we continue to proceed along the present course, it is highly probable that the enemy will leave a force to intercept us. It is prudent to assume that this ship will eventually suffer an extensive and unacceptable level of damage. I'm afraid Cosmos is right. We're in trouble unless we find a route where the enemy can't attack us. Look, I get what you're saying, but how the hell are we supposed to do that? This isn't a highway, you know? It's not like we can just take a detour or something. I guess not. Actually, there is a detour. Or maybe I'm wrong. What? Really, Momo? I've detected a small gap in the gravitational fields between the two black holes. If we fly through it, I think the chances of enemy detection would drop significantly. So, balls to the wall, let's go head hey, on in. Are you out of your mind? Yes, she is. Right. Even if we made the slightest mistake, we'd be caught by the gravitational field and dragged into the abyss. That sounds like a bad idea. It's impossible. What? Impossible? impossible? Hey, hey, who do you think you're talking to here? There's no way Tony Numero Uno is going to turn down a challenge like that. It's impossible. <sighs> there he but goes doable. again. Once that moron gets started, there's no stopping him. Ah, whatever. Do what you want. In your you ship. Better not even think about getting a scratch on my Elsa. There you go. Don't worry. Leave it to me, Momo. I'll be counting on you for a route. Yeah, as long as okay. he's driving, we won't have to worry about a scratch. The whole ship will have exploded because he'll drive into something he probably shouldn't have. Yeah, that sounds about right. Anyway, uh, now is as good a time, I guess, as any to announce that I have, even though I said like a week ago that I had stopped my run, uh, or my test run of episode three, well, it's kind of done. I got some time off work, and yeah, I just went balls to the wall. So it's all finished. I've done Whoa, everything I can in it. Dead. We're not getting any readings. It's almost like we'd be better off flying blindfolded. With Tony? you? Most of the time, yes. A massive distortion in the space ahead of the Elsa. A large mass is about to gate out. What? They're gating out here? That sounds like a bad idea, unless you're something that's got a lot of power. Or is just too big to be controlled by such gravity, which probably isn't that. But I think we want to run away from it anyway, because it's still pretty big. What the hell is that? Damn, where were they hiding that thing? What the hell is... They got a cloaking it's field! into Elsa's flight path! 180 seconds to impact! Tony, can we avoid it? Negative. It's taking up the entire gravity well. If we screw up, we'll get pulled into the black hole! Bastards! They're not gonna let us through no matter what! The only thing left for us to do is to make them move. Little Master, can we take them out from the inside? Yeah, if we can get inside, that is. <sighs> Tony, 
Maintain present course and increase to maximum speed. Hammer, disengage all weapon safety locks. Don't worry about Amy. Just let loose with everything we've got. Little tiny ship. Smack dab into that thing's belly. It's time you guys showed me what you're made of. Aye, aye, sir. Versus space station. I think we're gonna lose this fight. We're definitely gonna lose this fight. They look like Colossi attacks from StarCraft 2. Now, if only it was easy enough to dodge those attacks in that game. Not a very effective defense, and that really was kind of underwhelming considering how massive and surprising this was. It just, oh, by the way, few seconds, we win. And then they ignore us. Well, I guess they're, they're not ignoring us. And I guess I spoke too soon. Good catch. Cosmos, you have magnetic boots. No effect. But that's probably going to make taking off a little bit of a problem. A little rough. I think we just lost a wing. Pretty big force. We'll take the ESs, including one that they haven't even announced that we have yet. Can I go through the door, please? Thank you. Yeah, the door doesn't like me. Oh well. Um, let's run over the healing point one more time, even though I probably don't need to. And this door over here is no longer barred. It'll only be barred in areas where you can't go out near ES. Now we actually can go out in the ES, so it's no longer barred. And yeah, that's pretty uneventful. We just kind of, oh, by the way, we're good now. Anyway, here's a healing point. This is our walking speed. I hate it. And I know I've talked about this before in the Xeno series, but the walking speed needs to be just doubled. <laughs> anyway, um, actually, that's the running speed, not the walking speed, sorry. Okay, so, as you can see, we are able to have two people per mech, and if you take a look at the combatant side on the left and the reserve on the right, you'll notice that we can actually control who goes with who, and we can only have two in the party at one time. So we don't get all three mechs going for us. That's kind of unfortunate. But let's take a look here. We can also select who is with each person. Now, from what I recall, I want you together and you together, I believe. But I will go and take a look at that uh, before too long. Now, you will notice another thing is that my levels are back down to where they should have been, uh, assuming I didn't do any level grinding, because your ESs level up separately from your characters. This is kind of an odd thing to do, but uh, since there's no equipment to upgrade your ESs, it made sense to give them their own levels so that they could actually improve. Uh, unlike uh, the first game, there are no new upgrades, and unlike Xenogears, there's no new frames or engines or anything like that. Now, if you take a look at the attacks, normal attacks don't really matter. Special attacks, these are things that you can ch kind of charge up for, and we kind of went over this in the tutorial, but since that was like 15 hours ago, we'll go over it a little more. Now that we have more characters, you can take a look on here. Depending on which character you have, will change the double tech that you're able to do. And it's not really a double tech, it's a double tech in the sense that it uses two characters, but those characters are in the same controllable unit, so it's kind of yes and kind of no. Now, the vast majority of guides I see recommend using, let's see here, Wings of Light. I am not a big fan of Wings of Light myself. Um, it's fine, but uh, I, for the most part, I think I'd rather go for Chained Blast, 
because if I do that, then I can put it with Golden Bow. I could go Wings of Light with the uh, Chain Blast as well, but I tend to like using Zebulon because, as they mentioned before, the Zebulon is the only mech able to heal, and I want to have two attacks that are aura-based, because aura seems to be the best way to deal with a lot of bosses, at least through the first four or five mech bosses that we fight. So I'm probably going to go with that. I will give Wings of Light a try because it tends to uh, be used a lot in guides. So I'll check it out again, uh, even though in my previous testing, I found that my situate or my setup with Golden Bow and uh, Chain Blast seemed to work better. But I will uh, take a look into it again. Now, we go to status, we can take a look at all of the items that we have. And if you're going to use Asher, give it a Tune Circuit, because its default agility is 7, default on you is 8, and default on you is 9, considering it's Momo's mech. Uh, so yeah, that one's fast. It's also the reason why that one can use Ether, and none of the other ones can, because Momo. So yeah, depending on who you're using, just use the Tune Circuit to bring up your slowest character. Um, I'm going to go and equip myself out. Most of these things just increase your defense a little bit. Uh, the power shield is not particularly useful. I'd probably use that on um, Zebulon if I use it on anything. And this is kind of useless right now. It'll be more useful later, but uh, we'll get into that in due time. Anyway, I'm going to deck out my characters, figure out who I want for what reasons, and I will see you in a moment. Okay, we're back. Now, I pretty much set everyone up the way I had it. Uh, I just gave one defensive item to one, and one defensive item to another, and the tune circuit to the lowest uh, speed character. I'm gonna go with Asher and Dina for now. Uh, once we get around to boss time, I will be using someone else, though. I will be using Zebulon, because you really do need access to either in boss fights. Uh, not only to heal, but, uh, you know, for other things as well. Now, first things first, activate the trap. And let's fight and show off some of the new enemies around here. There are a few of them. And, of course, we're just going to run into one now. All right, so, Exec Executus Arma. These guys are 250% weak to Thunder, 150 to Beam, 150 to Pierce, weak to Aether. Now, that may seem counterintuitive, them being weak to Aether, as opposed to probably being more weak to Physical, since they're more a Physical-type uh, character. But it is what it is. They also drop an EF circuit with a, tw a with a 25% probability. I can't remember. I think that's ether defense, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I wouldn't really focus on trying to farm that. So they're weak to thunder. Not really weak to... Uh, well, they're slightly weak to pierce. So since I ran into the uh, slot there, we can go straight into our special attacks. We don't have to do anything. It just takes your EC or your charge. So I should be able to one-shot one of these guys with this. Which is a Matrix Bullet. Okay, that's that's fine. And you can use Chain Blast, which you're not weak to, but it might do enough. No, nowhere near. Uh, for the most part, you want to stick to your normal attacks. They're weak to Pierce and they're weak to Aether. So uh, if you'll notice uh, the attack abilities of the Dina there, Triangle attacks are ether based and they do beam damage. So, ether, might as well do ether damage. And the Asher and the Zebulon both have piercing attacks on triangle, so you might as well use those. As you can tell, these battles are nowhere near as difficult as the ones we've just had in the previous dungeon. The reason for this is because mech battles are really easy. Here we have, okay, the same new enemy. There are actually two variants of the Sarah 7. There's also Sarah 6 enemies and two variants of that one at that. Uh, the two versions of the 7 are both weak 250% to slash and 150% to um, hit. Uh, one of them is, uh, this one actually is 200% to hit, but uh, they're both weak to physical and they're both weak to aura. So, they also have a 10% chance of dropping beam armor, anti-beam armor, which would be very helpful, and I would like to pick one of those up. So I'm going to try and hit it with pierce damage, 
or aura damage. And since, is it you? It is you. So I'm going to stock with you so that I can get up to my uh, chain blast ability again. And I'm going to have you focus down the other one with your piercing attacks. Unfortunately, even though it doesn't seem like it, uh, Dina's beam damage actually does reasonable damage to these as well, so a lot of the bios aren't really the best, unfortunately. It's rather difficult to, uh, to kind of balance all that stuff out for whatever reason. Even though the guide says one thing, they seem to take slightly more damage from this or from that than the guide would suggest that they would be. Again, I mentioned this before uh, when we first were introduced to the mechs, but all mech battles do not came, contain skill points, and since obviously the mechs level up separately, it's all about the experience points for them. So we don't need to worry about killing enemies on specific slots or anything like that. So just get points and try and level up. That's pretty much it. So anyway, I do want to fight a few of those guys off screen to make sure I get some beam armor because that would be helpful. But I will uh, do that uh, in between episodes since we're coming close on that time anyway. Attack this thing and we will have access to another one of those uh, Encephalon dive uh, points that we can't do anything with until post game. That one was pretty cool, admittedly. Another forbidden device. Now, take a look at the speed of walking and think, does it really need to be this slow or should it be this speed? Even this isn't particularly fast. Actually, there's an enemy down here. Wait. And we have another new enemy. Two new enemies, in fact. This is the Sarah 6. Uh, just like the Sarah 7, they look very similar. There's two varieties, a S variant and an F variant. They're both 250% weak to Pyrrhus, 150 to Aura. And they, one of them, the, uh, the F variant, this one, has a chance to drop a G stun guard. And the S variant can drop an auxiliary armor B, which is the items that we already have equipped that give us a little more defense. So both of those would be relatively nice to get. Uh, the stun guard, not nearly as much. Um, this guy up here is one of the other new enemies, the Cannon Dude, and he is 150% weak to Beam, 150% weak to Thunder, 150 to Pierce, and he can't drop anything particularly useful, so hit it with a Pierce attack, which I don't have right now, but this one should do enough damage to take it out anyway. There we go. And that's all we really need to worry about. Uh, so Pierce for you. There we go, that's some nice damage. Yeah, these battles are not really as hard, so the strategy involved in them is substantially less. And we got G Stun Guard, that's not bad. Uh, the Junk Circuit, of course, is just trash loot, we don't really need that. I might as well equip that on somebody uh, into status. And a Stun Guard, Stun Resistant 25%. It's nothing substantial, but uh, it's there and it's something better to equip while I get new gear. Before taking that tangent path, we do want to continue back down the straight and narrow. And there's a somewhat of a puzzle here, which is rather straightforward. And you basically go up to these things and we need to hit these things. Now notice, the light went out and it faced forward. That's all you're trying to do. Make it, the lights go out and that thing shoot forward. And if you do that to all four of them, then it will unlock. Oh, wrong way on that one. Go. And hit it a couple more times. And eventually it will go where it's, really? There we go. And what about you? No, wrong way. It's hard to remember which way you gotta hit them until you actually hit them. But, oh well. It's not like it's a difficult puzzle, it's just line them all up, and they perform magic, and that's pretty much it. Once they do that, they unlock this huge um, 
I, I'm not sure what this is. I guess it's like a dock, kind of, sort of, maybe? Maybe this is supposed to hold all their mechs? And this is where they launch out of? But then again, we haven't really... We show them flying around in space, yet in order for me to get down there, I have to wait for this really slow elevator to come all the way to the top. Yeah. This game is slow. Anyway, that's pretty much all the time I have for today, so between now and next time I will fight a, a few battles and probably gain a couple of levels. This is another one of the points where I wanted to do some grinding, mainly just to catch up my mechs since they're so far behind at this point. And there are a few boss fights coming up with the mechs, so we will want to be able to uh, at least be prepared for those. So anyway, that's all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time!